All right, in this video, we're going to do an example of solving a system of uh, linear equations using Gauss-Jordan. So in this case, we've got three unknowns. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply turn this into a matrix. So let's see, our first row, we'll use the coefficients 1, 3, 1, and 10. Uh, we've got 1, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 6 for our second row. And then we have 2, positive 1, and positive 2, and uh, again a 10 for our third row. So again, our goal is to make the left side of this matrix look like the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So we're going to have to do a few things uh, to, to do that. Well, the first thing I want is, typically I want to get a, a, a 1 in the top left corner, which, okay, great, we have that. But my next entry is I want to get zeros in the rest of the column. So I'm going to do uh, two steps here at once. Um, so I'm going to take negative 1 times row 1, add that to row 2, and that's going to give me my new row 2. I'm also going to take negative 2 times row 1 and add that to row 3 to get my new row 3. Okay, so if we do this, let's maybe uh, move off to the side here. Um, if we do this, okay, I'm not going to do anything at all to the first row. So we have 1, 3, 1, and 10. So that doesn't change. Um, but then I'm going to take, I'm going to do my, my uh, first step here. So if we take negative 1 times 1, we'll get negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. That's what we wanted. We'll get negative 3 plus negative 2, which is negative 5. Uh, we'll get negative 1 plus negative 1, which will be negative 2. And then we'll get negative 10 plus negative 6, which will be negative 16. Um, so that takes care of that operation, that step. If we do uh, negative 2 plus 2, we'll get 0. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 will be negative 5. Uh, negative 2 times uh, 1 will be negative 2 plus 2 will be 0. And then we'll get negative 20 plus 10, which will be negative 10. All right, so a couple different things we could do here. Again, the, I want to eventually make a, a, a 1 appear sort of in the, the middle here. Um, but what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to interchange row 2 and row 3. I'm just going to switch those out. So if we interchange row 2 and row 3, well, again, nothing happens to our first row. So we still have 1, 3, 1, 10. But now I'm just going to interchange. So I'll have 0, negative 5, 0, and negative 10. That will be my second row. And then uh, we'll have 0, negative 5, negative 2, and negative 16 as our new third row. So we just switched them out. Well, to make a 1 appear um, in, our, in our second place, Eventually, I'm going to divide both sides by uh, by negative. I'm going to excuse me. I'm going to divide row two by negative five. But eventually, I want to get a zero above it and below it. To make that happen, I'm going to go ahead and add row two and row three to get my new row three. So this is kind of the uh, the thing with matrices. There's sort of lots of different ways that you can go about doing it to eventually, you know, get all to the same answer. So I'm leaving the first row alone. I'm leaving the second row also alone for the moment. But if I add row 2 and row 3, I'll get a 0. Negative uh, 5 plus negative 5 is going to be... Okay, well, let's be careful, right? Because we don't want to just add them. So I think what we're actually... What we need to do is I'm going to take row 2 and multiply it by a negative 1. That's going to do it for us. Because then I'll get uh, a positive 5 plus negative 5, which will give us a 0. And then we'll get 0 plus negative 2, which is, well, negative 2. And if we take negative 1 times negative 10, we'll get positive 10. 10 plus negative 16 will give us a negative 6. All right, so let's see. Um, the next thing I am going to do is I'm going to make this negative 5 into a positive 1. And I'm going to do that by taking row 2 and dividing that by negative 5. So if we do that, again, the first row, we're just leaving it alone. The second row will now become 0, 1, 0, and we'll get a positive 2. Um, and let's see, I'm going to go ahead and even, uh, I think I'm going to do another step at once as well. 
I'm going to take row 3 and divide that by negative 2. So we'll get 0, 0, 1, and then it looks like a negative 6 over negative 2 would give us positive 3. So we're getting pretty close here. In fact, we now know what z should equal. It says z should equal 3. 1 y would equal 2. Um, but let's go ahead and figure out, let's, let's make the left side look like the identity. So I'm going to take a negative 3 times row 2 and add that to row 1 to get my new row 1. So let's see, uh, the second row, 0, 1, 0, 2, I'm going to leave that alone. The third row I'm going to leave alone for the moment as well. Let's see, so uh, negative 3 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 3 will give us 0. Negative 3 times 0 plus 1 is 1. And then we'll have uh, negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 10 uh, will give us a positive 4. One more step to do, we want to make a, a 0 uh, in this entry. Well, again, I can just take negative 1 times row 3, add that to row 1, and that will give me my new row 1. And I, at that point, I think we'll be in business. So the second row, 0, 1, 0, 2, we'll leave that alone. The third row, 0, 0, 1, 3, we're going to leave that alone. If I take negative 1 times 0 plus 1, we'll get 1, uh, we'll get a 0. If we take negative 1 times 1, we get negative 1 plus 1, we'll get 0. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1. And now we've got it. The left side looks like the identity matrix. So this tells me that the solution to my system of equations is x equals 1, 1 y equals 2, and then it says 1 z equals 3. So it says the solution to my very original system of equations here would be x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3.